LA's gotta be the most difficult city to start out in as a musician. If you're feeling overwhelmed, that's par for the course. I don't know how anyone does it. It's very hard. A lot of the venues that you're gonna look to play at for your first gig or your first couple gigs are gonna demand that you have a draw of 10 to 20, maybe even 30 people, which is a lot when you're just relying on your friends and you don't have a fan base yet. That being said, there's a couple videos that help uh, understand how the scene works, places you might play, and what to expect when you're playing your first gigs. Uh, so, jumping into it, let's just get over the different types of shows. If you see me looking this way, it's because I have my notes over there, so I make sure I hit all the points. Um, so the types of shows you're going to be playing as a beginning band or a beginning solo act, well there's bringer shows, there's open mics that book, there's showcases, uh, you can submit through sites like Sonic Bids, or you can put up your own show. Uh, let's break it down just a little bit, and each of these points are going to have their own separate video that's going to tell you more people to contact or places to check out specifically. Uh, but in general, a bringer show, also known as uh, expected ticket sales, or like minimum ticket sales. Uh, bringer show is more of a stand-up term, but that's what I use. Uh, basically, it demands that you bring in a certain number of people or sell a number of tickets for the night. Uh, some people will tell you something like, I'll sell you 100 tickets for $100 and you keep any profit. So if you do it that way, you sell 10 tickets for five or 10 bucks, you make your money back, and then you make whatever's left. But don't count on selling the whole 100 tickets on your first time out. Uh, or places will be like, you just need to sell 10 tickets for the night, uh, $10 and anything over that, you'll, you'll take. If you don't sell those 10 tickets, you have to make up the difference. I've been with bands that have had to make up the difference. It's really not fun to go to a show and then have to pay 30, 40 bucks to get on stage. Um, so that's a bringer show. Then there's open mics that book, which are a great place to get started as a musician because the difference between this and a bringer show is open mics, you're working with somebody who's seen your music, liked it, wants to put it on their stage. It's like a little bit heartwarming as a musician to get someone who says, I like you enough, go on stage. And a lot of these places don't demand that you bring people for your first show. They want you to bring five to 10 people, but if you don't bring the five to 10 people, it's not the end of the world. They understand that you're getting started. Uh, so I'll have a list of those in another video and I'll also put some stuff in the comments to check out. Uh, showcases. Wherever you live, but specific in LA, there's a few different songwriting or artist groups that I'm a part of that you can join for free that put up monthly or weekly showcases depending on the different uh, group. Um, those are awesome because like an open mic show, you're not responsible for bringing everyone in on the night and it's fostering a community so you can really work with people to get more shows or do or play out from there but really for me the the take home is i'm not responsible for bringing everyone to this show i can add it to my show uh, calendar it looks cool but i'm not fully responsible for doing everything i do as much as i can but i'm not ultimately responsible in the end uh, and then, then you can submit for shows via sites like sonic bids i say that because i've only used sonic bids but there are a few that are out there uh, it's basically a monthly fee or a yearly fee, I don't know, however you pay. And then uh, a list of shows that you can submit to uh, based on um, type of music, size of crowd, uh, some shows you have to pay to submit to, which I think is a little weird, um, or festivals that you can submit to. I really like it. I've had medium success with it, uh, but I'll go over that in another video as well. And the last kind is putting on your own show. When I was looking for advice on how to get started out here in LA as a musician, people kept saying, well, you can do this, do this, put on your own show. I don't know if there is a good way to start out as a musician and put up your own show. I mean, talk about being responsible for everything. I've considered doing it uh, once I know more bands or once I start interacting with a larger number of people that are in my kind of subset of music in LA. Um, then it might work. Then everyone kind of works together to put up like a three or four hour night of music. Um, but just starting out, you're really relying on your friends. It's gonna be hard to get a whole night together. That said, if you've done this and you have any tips or advice on this, please leave notes or send me a message. I'd love to share that with everybody else. Um, so those are the types of shows. You got your bringer shows, open mics, uh, showcases, uh, submitting online, or make your own show. Now, some drawbacks for these shows, uh, just so you know what to expect, is a lot of them are gonna have a low audience or they're gonna have a high audience turnover. So people will come for one band and they won't really stay for, for uh, the next band. Or one band might bring uh, a lot of friends to the show and they'll talk all over the next set. Um, there's not a lot of audience at a lot of these spaces. Uh, I've played one bar that guaranteed they're gonna have like 200 people there. Well, the bar did, but the, the venue was actually by, like through another door. So 
the venue was much smaller. It only brought in like maybe 15 or 20 people. Um, so know that the audience is gonna be smaller and they're really there to support their own friend. Just like you would be there doing your show, this person before you, they're doing their show, bringing in as many people as they can. And then they wanna leave and go do their own thing. A lot of these nights aren't set up uh, to like accommodate a certain style of music all throughout the night. It's whoever the booker can bring in. Um, so just know that, expect it, it's gonna be fine. Um, and like I said, uh, the nights aren't always one genre, so you might do a really great job at your genre, but if before you use like a hardcore metal band and you're an acoustic solo act, a lot of that's not gonna transition over, but some of it might, I don't know. Um, also know that uh, if the more of these shows that you do, you're gonna burn through your friends. I actually started out here doing improv, and so I burned through a lot of my friends that way. They came to a lot of my shows as an improv comedian. Starting out, I'd get like 10, 20 people to each of my shows, um, but about a year of that, I mean, they've seen a lot of shows. They're, uh, they've been very supportive, but I mean, how much can you expect from a single person? So just know if you're doing four or five of these shows um, in a matter of months, the amount of interest your friends are gonna have is supporting you is gonna dwindle, even if they love your music, even if they love you, it's a lot to expect of somebody to come out. And I mean, you know how LA people are anyway. It's, it's difficult to get people to come out to all your shows anyway, even if they promise they're gonna come. Uh, and to that end, if you put up a Facebook event, which a lot of these places are gonna want you to put up a Facebook event or at least promote uh, your show some, um, don't expect everyone who RSVPs to your Facebook event to come to your show. But it's not all doom and gloom. You are getting on stage. You are just getting started. Uh, so here are some best practices. And like I said, with all this stuff, I'm gonna break it out in other videos. But some best practices are uh, space out your gigs. Uh, most venues will demand that you don't play anywhere around them for like two weeks before or two weeks after. So it's usually one, uh, one gig a month, maybe two gigs a month. Uh, that also gives time for your friends to reset and get excited about your next gig and for you to transition between what worked in the first gig and what you're gonna be doing in the second gig. Um, you have to be marketing. I'm gonna do more on that, but uh, social media marketing, create a flyer, um, post to all the relevant sub pages on Reddit. I'm gonna go more into marketing in a different video, but just know that you're gonna need to market this show. You're really gonna need to market these shows. You're really gonna need to market these shows. Uh, my last point, and this is not something a lot of people think about, but have a clear reason to play each gig. For instance, I played a festival gig that I knew uh, I was not really the right genre for, but I got to put on my roster that I played a festival, which has helped me in booking other festivals and fairs. Um, so if you're playing a gig, know that you're playing the gig just to get your first gig, or you're playing a gig because you really like this promoter and you think you're gonna have a good turnout and they're gonna book you somewhere else next. Or play a gig because you wanna try something super experimental and this is the, this is the venue to do it in. Um, just have a reason for playing the gig so when you know when your gig is done, if the music sounded great, if the audience responded well, you also know how to measure your success because once you play a few of these gigs, you're gonna feel really good after all your shows uh, and you're gonna wanna grow your fan base and you're gonna grow as a band and so you need to know why you're playing these gigs. Not only are you doing a good job, but what you're getting out of this gig. So that's it, that is the bare minimum of gigging out in LA for your first gig, your first couple gigs. Uh, stay tuned for more videos that are gonna break all this stuff down more. If you have any questions or if you have your own advice, put that in the comments. I would love to share that. I'd love to get more insight of what you're doing, what works for you, uh, any advice you have for other people that are just starting out because like I said, this is the hardest town to get started in as a musician. All right, 